Since the first screening of The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring in 2001, New Zealand has become the embodiment of Middle Earth to millions of Tolkien readers and moviegoers. Ian Brodie has created a guidebook to help you find all the locations from the movie and has just updated and reworked the book he likes to call The Director's Cut. Welcome, Ian. Thank you, Lisa. Nice to be here. Are you a lifelong Tolkien fan? I am. I first read the book, I guess, over 30 years ago, and it really captured my imagination. And living in New Zealand, I literally could walk out the door and see Middle Earth. That's how it felt for me. Mm. And I've read the book over 30 times now. Really? I just love it. Well, it's interesting you say that, because I know that Peter Jackson has done the foreword to the book, and he talks about, as a lad, um, getting the train yes. north and thinking, that's, so, that's there and that's there, and having it all in his head from a young age. That's exactly how I felt at, at 15. So when the filming came along, of course, it was, I know this is Middle Earth anyway, so I'm sure there's going to be so many people like myself that want to go out there and find these beautiful places. And to me, it doesn't matter. The sets have gone. We just use our imagination mm. like we did before the films came along. Yeah. So did you pitch the idea for, for the guidebook to to the production crew or? Yeah, I did. I um, first went straight through to Peter Jackson's mm. office and uh, they liked the idea. Went through to the States, through to London, to HarperCollins, in a little convoluted process, but it came back and uh, we did it. And for me, it's just been a ball ever since. Yes. Yeah. So initially you came out with, the, with, with some smaller versions, didn't you? We had, uh, the first edition only came out with the first two films in it. Right. Um, because the third film hadn't reached the screens, of course. Then the third film, the second book, and the small book was okay. For me, I wanted a big book. I wanted to showcase that scenery. So the little book worked for people as travelling around New Zealand, backpackers, putting it in a glove box of a car. And we sold about 200,000 copies of that book in the last 18 months almost. Mm. Scary, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now with this, as we call it, um, the big extended edition, mm. that to me is what I wanted to do. Big pictures and a little bit more text different things me being on the set being in the movie was fantastic for me so tell me about that the access that you had i mean were you were you able to go anywhere virtually um peter jackson and his team were just fantastic and after the first book came out they said come up to wellington uh, sit on set and for me it was like being a kid in a candy store to be able to sit behind peter jackson watching him direct shoot the breeze with vigo mortensen all those sorts of things i literally had to pinch myself but Vigo, again, he gave me images free of charge for use in this book. Mm. So, because, again, all these people from all parts of the world love New Zealand as well. So they were happy to be part of it. Well, I mean, really, there were, there were people who would have killed for that <laughs> opportunity to sort of be on Peter's shoulder and watching everything. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's something, probably one of the highlights of my life. I will never forget it. Um, and the wonderful thing, Peter allowed me to take photos on set as well. And there were so many extras, of course, that never even got a photo of themselves in, in their uniform, whereas I was allowed to. So hence mm. that little piece in the book in this new one about me being on set because it's something very special that very few people have the privilege to be able to do. You also starred in the in the third movie, didn't you? Tell me about Just, that. Just, uh, I made about half a second, but that was enough <laughs> for me. I can see my face and I can say I've acted next to Siri and McAllen and that was great. My son, who was 14 at the time, uh, he was an orc in the movie as well and thousands of orcs, we can just spot him. So it's it's part of history. Lord of the Rings, the films, is to me like Gone with the Wind. It's something that's going to be around 50 years' time. They might make repeats, but they will never be the same as that first one. Because you had such exclusive access and, and a camera with you, have you had sort of people saying, um, you know, how about... I mean, were people plying you for information at the time and, you know, inside stories? There was all sorts of um, little hints of, what about this and what's happening there? And can you tell me about this? And um, my lips were sealed. I just was part of, because I'd had the privilege and the honour to be able to do it, I had to be correct and just mm. not say a word. Did you sign any confidentiality stuff? Funnily enough, I didn't. Really? Um, no, my name, my bond, I guess, was my word, hopefully, and, and it's been that way ever since. Mm. Yeah. Now, you've taken most of the photographs in the book. Were you always a keen photographer? Because they're pretty good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are. I, I've been a photographer since an early age, and um, I look after an aviation museum, Warbeads Museum in Wanaka. So I take a lot of aeroplane photos, but my hobby is landscape photography. And 
for me living in Wanaka, doing this book, mm. it was a day trip to Queenstown, it was a day trip to Glenorchy, these fantastic places, and I could choose the best time to go. And I had a ball flying around in helicopters, being dropped in remote locations to take photos. Was <laughs> um, it was fantastic fun, and I love my photography. Mm. Let's talk about some of your photographs because mm, sure. you've taken some um, still stores of some of the images that are in the book. Let's see what comes up first. This I think is this is Glen Orkey, isn't it? Or, oh no, no, this oh, is Mount Vic. Right here, <laughs> and that's I love Wellington because right here, in the centre of town, you can walk up into woods, trees that could be a million miles from the city and literally I could turn around from that photo that I took and see downtown skyscrapers of Wellington. So with this particular one, what did this become in the, or what did that one in Mount Vic become on the, in the movie? That was where the hobbits hid under the tree and the Nazgul came over with his hand and was almost going to grab them. Never just did of course. Never did. Just part of that suspense. That's down in my hometown almost, that's uh, up in the back of Mount Aspiring National Park. And again, the actors in the film had to be dropped off by helicopter in mm. these places. They had to work in the elements. It's um, not easy. No, pretty harsh conditions at oh, times, totally. I would think. And they had to be aware that they could be stuck up there overnight, for example, if they couldn't get out. So literally, the actor's journey through some of these fantastic places almost mirrors, in fact, mm. the fellowship's journey. Can the public get access to almost all of these these places Every now. single place in the book you can get access you to, can. Um, which is a wonderful way for people to enjoy New Zealand, down there with um, those beautiful trees in Glenorchy. Um, again, the book, I wrote it for fans, but I've also written it just for people coming to New Zealand. Maybe they've seen the movie once and they go, wow, that's a cool place, I'd like to go there. They can go there, enjoy the scenery. Let's just talk about this cover. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Shot, because you said that's, that's three locations all in one, really. That's which... three places, Gandalf and Pippin riding to Minas Tirith there in the background, but the foreground is Deer Park Heights near Queenstown. Then we've got a model of Minas Tirith, but the mountains in the background are the Hooker Valley by Mount Cook. So, real places, but combined together to mm. create exactly what Tolkien described. And that's the wonderful thing with the Lord of the Rings films, is Peter Jackson, his team, read the books. Tolkien describes so fastidiously the geography of Middle Earth, and they went and found them. No matter how hard it was to get to these places, how high up a mountain, they stuck exactly to the way it was that Tolkien described. Mm. And people now can go and revisit that. It's fantastic. Have you had much p uh, feedback from Peter about the book? Peter, uh, I'm really pleased. Peter loves the book, and, and that's, that's nice for me, I feel, because... It was an honour to be part of the whole thing and it's nice to have positive feedback. So with this book we've got, of course, Peter Jackson's written two articles, Barry Osborne, the producer, Richard Taylor, the head of Weta, Alan Lee that did all the design. So all these people have sort of chipped in to help mm. with this end result. It's great. Was it a little bit of an anti-climax? I mean, this is, I guess this is it now, isn't it? This is your coffee, this is the director's cut. So, I mean, you're feeling a little bit, yeah. it's all over. It's all over, but I still get to talk to nice people, come to great places around New Zealand, mm -hmm. and I think that will go on. People still go to Sound of Music locations after, what, 30 years maybe? Mm. And I think New Zealand will be the same with Lord of the Rings, but we'll find another project to move on with. Anything in mind? Uh, there's a few. Watch the space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we'll look forward to hearing about them in the future. Ian, thank you very much indeed for coming in and sharing it with us. My cool. pleasure. <laughs>